All right, I hope, um, Shabbat Shalom, y'all. I hope the mic is recording now. Hope y'all are doing good. If you can't come in, share the feed. Apologize. This morning when you came in, uh, you heard a little rustling uh, as the intro was coming in. We was getting things set up. So hope y'all are doing good. I'm going to make sure the microphone is still on right now. All right, I hope, um, Shabbat Shalom, y'all. I hope the mic is recording now. There we go. Hope y'all are doing good. Everything was good. You can't come in and share the feed. Apologize this morning. Amen. I hear right. a little rustling. Uh, as the intro's coming in, we're getting things set up. So, hope y'all are doing good. Microphone's still on right now. All right. I'm going to share the feed here. Microphone's still on right now. All right. I'm going to share the feed here. Shabbat Shalom to those that are on now. Shabbat Shalom. Morning, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, John Bill. Good morning. Hope that you feel better. It's not a. It's not picking up the music. But I should have had that other microphone. But it picks up us, but it won't pick up the music. So that's cool. So y'all, we we do have some music playing, but I guess this microphone on my uh my laptop is not picking it up, but it's all right. Oh dear. All right, so y'all, today, as you can see on the uh, the little tag down here. We're going to be discussing this word called imona. That's how you said in the Hebrew. What we're talking about is faith. Uh, we started this in, uh, in Bible study a couple of, uh, a week ago. And 
we realize faith is not one of those subjects that you can just talk about one time or so one and done. You can wrap everything in type message. Faith faith is one of those things or Imuna is one of those things that is an ongoing uh, is an ongoing topic for the rest of your life, period. And uh, it's fine. Okay, cool, gentlemen. Says fine. As long as you hear me, all right, good. Johnville, if you start to get an act up, I'm gonna look to you to let me know if you can't hear uh, anything. Thank you, Johnville. Always on it for us. She be making sure that uh, we recording. She making sure that we send our messages. So I, I appreciate you uh, for that, Johnville. We appreciate you for that. But uh, again, faith is one of those things where it's not a one and done topic. This is something that is ongoing from the time you're born to the time that you will die. And what we aim to do is open up that topic for you to explore even more, because from what we've been taught through churchisms, faith has been based around tangible things. It's something we have to have to obtain cars, houses, homes, husbands, wives, materialistic thing, but it's much, much more than that. And so I'm challenging you today to understand or challenge you today and asking you to ask yourself, do you really understand Imuna? Do you really understand faith? Or is it something you think you know based off of what a pastor said or what mama said or a minister or somebody in the church said? And this is not a knock on anybody, but this is something that Morris and I have come to understand with our own walk together, but also uh, uh, individual, because it's an individual thing. So this is a question that I want to get turning in your head. We're going to have a discussion today, uh, and we're going to have the Father have his way uh, through everything he wants to do. So without that being said, uh, before I pray, Shemors, is there anything you would like to say or add to or... Um, actually, no. I think you, you got us going on the right track. Um, it's definitely a season where we, as believers, the set-apart people, have to operate in unmovable, immovable faith, um, steadfast. And just, you know, the Father's been tugging on this with us for a little bit and being able to kind of get it before um, those of you who are watching or will watch, I mean, it's an important thing. It, it just understanding how detrimental and how vital is faith is for a believer, a follower of the most high. And so we're going to tap into it. I think um, what, what happens is we grab on to a, uh, not a, a surface level of faith. And we, we've seen that and we've heard that. And like you said, it's always attached to some natural thing. But we haven't really been taught or trained the essence of faith in the uh, supernatural, in the in the supernatural, in the um, day to day, very basic functioning of a believer's life. And so I think today, as we get into it, um, you know, Jay and I just want you to examine yourself, your thoughts on faith, your behaviors behind your faith, and and what your faith has done um, so far in your life. What, what evidence of your faith you have this far so that we can sharpen, so that we can actually go into this season or maintain in this season with, with that steadfastness we were talking about, with, with the sharpening of our faith and the standing on it. We all have a measure of it. And so we just want to get before you guys today to encourage you. I know many of you are going through things um, and, and it's so general. We go through things every day. So I'm not saying that like I'm putting on a prophetic hat. That's not what I'm doing at all. I'm just saying, I know Jay and I are going through things and we count it all joy. And I know those of you who are watching, I, nine times out of 10, you got something going on. There's, there's something that you could just, just really use a sharpening of your faith for some intention in your faith um, so that you can really grow in the father more than receive a tangible thing. And so, um, I'm I'm with you, Jay. I'm I'm on track here, and I think it's going to be a great discussion today. I'm going to go ahead and dive in and pray. And Shamor said some key things, and what she was saying, she was using some key words too that you're going to hear again. So, Abba Yah, have your way on today. 
Take us out of ourselves and place us in the rims of your spirit. Decrease us so that you may be increased, Father. Help us to wake up Israel. Help us to wake up Jacob. Help us to wake up your people, Father. This is not about a man. This is not about a woman. This is not about titles. Father, this is always and will for always be about you. Yahuwah, we thank you. No matter what we're dealing with in our lives, in our lives, in our hearts, or in our lives, our minds, nothing is more important than hearing from you and getting your Torah, your law, your instruction. This is what it's about. No games, no gimmicks. Father, we're not here to tickle somebody's emotion, but we're here to set your people free as you set us free daily. Thank you, Yahuwah. Thank you, Yahuwah. Break the shackles off of someone today. Heal somebody's heart. Heal somebody's mind. Heal the situation. Somebody's stuck on today, Yahuwah. Somebody's been searching for the answer. This just may be what they need on today. We're not going to think higher of ourselves. Titles don't mean nothing, Father, but we need your word too. We come together as one sound, one mind, one body, one levav, one kahel, assembly, called out. Let your bisora, your good news, be heard on this day. In your son, Yahusha, Ahamashiach, our Messiah name, we pray. Amen and shalom. Amen. All right. So, y'all, today we are coming from the scripture. If you would turn with me to uh, Romans. I'm going to go to Romans. And that's going to be Romans chapter 12. Verse 1 through 5. What's that? What's wrong, buddy? You don't know what scripture is. Let me see. Excuse me. I, uh, no, no. There. Yeah, let me see a paper. Our kids are here and they're doing, we got them doing assignments as well. So Jeremiah was asking, it says right here, read Exodus. You got to read, baby. Huh? Exodus chapter three, verse 10. Come here. So let me show you something. Come here. Anytime you're looking for a book, you can always go to the table of content. See that? See, that says Genesis, Exodus. See that? Exodus. Start on page 78. Okay. I didn't know you have to cry about Thanks for reposting that. Jamville and Boom. Ms. Shaquise. Exodus. So what do you got to read? ladies today. What do you got to read? Exodus chapter 3, verse 10. So you find the big numbers like that. Boom. Here we go. Right here. That's how you do it. And then you find verse 10, okay? All right. We got them on home assignment. So we're going to go to uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 5. I'm going to put that up on the screen there for you. Shabbat shalom, Teddy. Shabbat shalom, Miss Jones of Johnville. Shabbat shalom, Tiffany, my school friend there. Uh, I'm ha I have it up here, y'all. We're going to go through 1 through 5. Uh, Y'all know for some of y'all that have been with us, we don't just, uh, there's no way if we do this thing right that we can get through, you know, five verses. Sometimes we can't even get off the first two. If we're mm -hmm. rightly dividing the word, like Father said, that's the Hebrew word, Zadi, where you cut. And that's what we do. We cut the word so we can rightly divide it the correct way. And you can understand the true intent of the function of Hebrew, what father was saying versus just preaching at you, getting you excited. So let's go for, I'm going to read from the Sefer um, after we read from this, because I want you to understand what's happening here. When I say Sefer, Sefer is a uh, Hebrew word for book, but uh, it has the restored uh, Hebrew name. So I don't want y'all to be thrown off by what we're actually reading today. Okay. So let's go to, 12 here and it says I beseech you therefore I mean listen I, I, I'm begging you I'm imploring to you 
Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahuwah, God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahuwah, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your lev, your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahuwah. I said it like that on purpose so you understand each word. For I say, through the grace, <laughs> grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to Yahuwah, hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members to one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every member one of another. Wow. Hallelujah. Y'all, I know it may sound like I can't read, but I promise you <laughs> I can read. I, I said it like that on purpose uh, so that you will understand and grasp the importance of every word. Baby. Don't do that. I said it like that so that you can understand the importance of every word. Sometimes when you slow down and you read the Bible, you you see words that you may have read before, but really didn't. Oh, man, I didn't know that was there. And when you read it slowly and when you read it line upon line, things jump out at you that you never probably caught in the beginning. And that's what we started doing with Shamoris and I uh, started waking up to the truth versus waking up to uh, religion. And Right. And we're not the end all be all. We don't know everything. Y'all We're still learning. But that that we have learned so far, we eagerly go back and we try to uh, to help TGCB understand it because first we got to do our due diligence and study. Hey, what does this word mean? Uh, what what is Father really saying? What is the function of what he's saying versus us just skimming over? It? Because there's no way you're supposed to take a scripture and preach from it. You can take any scripture and make it sound like what you want to sound like and that be completely. True wrong be dead wrong and explain to the people something that father never even intended so you got a bunch of people getting hyped up off of a misinterpret scripture and then they go out to try to apply what you said and they're trying to figure out why am i falling short mm -hmm. scriptures are laws laws are keys that can be used to open up certain doors mm -hmm. but if you don't know which key opens up which door you're going to be standing at that door with a handful of keys trying to figure out why can't I unlock this key? And then you get mad at God because, God, you told me that whatever I say in your, you know, whatever I ask in your son's name, you will do whatever. You know, I ask you will give. Well, why aren't you giving it to me? Because we're not using the right key to unlock the right door. Does that make sense? It does. I mean, I'm so good with studying to show myself approved. Um, but, you know, oftentimes we're leaning to people and, and you know, the father really kind of dealt with me um, about it. Like he allowed me to see how if you now I'm not jabbing at anybody. I mm -hmm. just want you to just follow me. How when you notice people get on social media, they're quoting the words of man more than they are the words of the Bible. So pastor so and so coined this statement. They can believe it. They can they can spread it. But nobody's really grabbing scripture for scripture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, it has to have the stamp and approval of man. And with that, we are often leaning toward men and women to just make sure that we are our pulse is right in our understanding of the word. But I can guarantee you, the more you get into the word and the more get into you, into you he's going to give you the hidden treasures that you won't be confused in his word. Now, yeah, it may start out where you got a lot of questions, but that is the conversation 
and the relationship, especially when it's new, when you are in a new relationship, naturally, don't you have a lot of questions? Yes. You want to find this out about a person. You want to find that out about a person. You want to get to know them. Well, as you're getting into your Bible, that's exactly what's happening. You are getting to know this word that is the, the word that won't return into him void, the word that will outlive both the heavens and the earth, right? It is going to take some time. It's going to take some patience. It's going to take genuine interest um, and desire. And that's going to help you with, with this word. Now, I just say all of that to say this. Jay and I, as we're talking about faith, it's over here. As we are talking about faith today, many of us have an idea of faith. We have come this far by faith. Let's just be real. You know, and even though our faith might not be as sharp as it can be, we might not be as solid as we need to be at times in our faith. Because let's be honest, some of us have believed in him for something and doubted it the next day. We still have come this far by faith, that thing in the inside of us that keeps us believing this invisible Yah, this invisible Elohim, this invisible God that we can't see, this thing that keeps us going back to our knees in prayer, this thing that keeps us, you know, going and, and serving in, in, in our ministries in any capacity. That takes a measure of faith. And so today, as we dive into it, we want to get to the point where your faith is a principal thing and not something that you you pick up and put down pick up and put down. See, as a believer, your faith is, it's a lifestyle and it is the thing that separates you from the world. Your faith, the world is always going to lean to instant gratification, what it can see, what other people approve of, how it's received by the world. The All of that is going to be very superficial. It's going to be very influential. But when it comes to your faith, your faith is a principal thing that is allowing you to walk so different from that of the world. It's not going to be popular. It's not going to be widely participated and spread. The Bible tells us that. But for some reason, we have a, a desire to have our faith validated mm -hmm. by the next person or these persons or this group or a wide mass of people. You don't need your faith validated. The Father validates your faith when the manifestation of that belief comes through the process. You know, I'm glad you're saying it because we, we do have scripture that we're gonna back up with this. And y'all, so this is not one of those things where we're just gonna hit every single point today. This is a discussion that we really want people to understand and grasp so that you will know how to exercise your faith to a greater level. Uh, first off, this word, imuna. Shamoris may keep the word saying faith, or we may intertwine it, but I want you to understand the real, the true, the original word of it, imuna, stop baby. The Hebrew word for gonna, faith knock that out. Stop. is imuna and also amuna. Ah, there it is, good. It's another way to say imuna, it. Imuna, amuna. And how you spell it is E-M-U-N-A, or some spell it E-M-U-N-A-H-R-A-M-U-N-A-H. -A -A amuna, imuna, depending on your dialect and where you are, okay? Uh, you can look this word up in the Strong's Dictionary. Matter of fact, if you have the Blue Letter Bible online, look up the word faith. And remember, in Hebrew, Hebrew is based off of function, not idea. Greek is based off of the idea. Greek stole from the Hebrew and tried to translate our word, and they did a horrible job of it. Yeah. Very horrible job. Well, how do I know that? So by going back and studying. And when we studied in the book of Maccabees, we see how the Greeks came down and they forced our Hebrew people they to, had to translate quickly, right. they had to translate uh, convincingly out of, out of fear yes. for their lives. And you could imagine, you know, you can imagine how that, how that went. Um, but nonetheless, we, the Greek focus function focuses on the idea thing. That's a, that's, really kind of the basis of our English language is the idea. That's why our letters in itself don't have a function. You have to group them together mm -hmm. to create something. Um, but that's totally contrary to our Hebrew alphabet. Every letter has a function. It's telling you a story within the word. It's kind of like names with destiny. Oh, you mm -hmm. said some names with destiny because if you go back and read in the word, everybody, everybody that had a name meant something. something. It really was attached to their destiny. Absolutely. Let's let's dive into this word, Morris, because I want to show the people here. 
this word imona and how it's spelled in Hebrew. Um, you do? Or, oh, okay. It would take me some time to even try to get that up. But uh, yeah, because I have to take it off the email, plug it in, plug it in here, and then okay. do all that. But what did you have? Just in case I can, while you're talking, I can uh, plug it in. But I'm going to show them okay. this. Uh, imona. Let me give you the definition of faith, because a lot of people you ask, well, what is faith? They're going to give you the number one answer that everybody the whole time, almost everybody in the world will say, faith is the substance of things hoped for, yet the evidence of things not yet seen. OK, we understand that. But what is faith? I know it's describing to you what it is, but faith is much more than just that, y'all. It, it has everything to do with our entire existence. And I'm going to back up just with a couple of scriptures of what I'm saying here, because I don't want you to limit yourself to what faith is in a one dimensional thing. Right. Faith is multidimensional. Our father, our, our Elohim is multidimensional. So this word faith, you spell it in the Hebrew as and I want you to be able to see uh, the picture because y'all know when I do this, I got to make sure y'all see it. Aleph. <laughs> which means. Ox. The strength, I mean, strength leader, what is first teacher? It means Yah, God, okay? Aleph, Mem. Mem is the picture of water, means chaos, mighty to come from, massive. Aleph, Mem, Wav. This is Wav right here. I gotta make sure I'm putting it in the right so y'all can see without the glare. Wav means nail, peg, to add, to hook, join together, making secure, becoming bound. Okay. If you pay attention, these words mean something, it's adding up to something. Then you have the letter noon. Noon is it means seed, activity of life, fish activity, to sprout, means descended. Ah, here's our word. It means faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then you also have the last letter and how you spell imuna. Faith is hey. You may recognize some of these words in the Bible. Hey means low. It means behold. It means to show. To reveal. In this word alone, Father is showing you something. There's a message in each one of these letters. It but gives a function. It gives a function when you bring these letters together of what's really taking place. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. What you what you spelled out here is leading us to Amunah or Imunah, um, which is a function of faith. What we have to understand that Imunah is actually faithfulness. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's functioning in faith is it, is imuna, but it has a root word, and that root word is is amin, amin. Ah, come on. Uh huh. Amin. So, um, or imun, okay. right? And that's the aleph, the mem, and the nun. Now, breaking that down is the word itself, faith. That is the root word, and you put the the. Uh, Ending on that, we're getting the function of it. It's basically saying because we have that faith that we're going, the life is going to be revealed into us, right? Behold, that's a revelation. That's the hands up. That's the that's the hay. And so, um, having that root word faith is telling us something, uh, and and how crucial it is. Um, and, and did we get into what faith itself was outside of Hebrews eleven and one? Uh, no. So I was going to break down what all these letters meant. Gotcha. Okay. So what the story behind this word Imuna is the fact that Aleph, the first we, we were taught in the Greek that it's the Alpha and Omega and that's a lie. It's Aleph and Tav. Tav yeah. Beginning and ending. Aleph is beginning, Tav is in. So Aleph oh, also is, is the, the, sign, the sign covenant. It's the seal, it's the covenant. Yes. So it's almost like it's the beginning and the promise. It's the beginning and the sign. It's the beginning and, and the covenant into fruition. Yes. So what this word is saying is, remember, Aleph is God. So Yah, what Yah is doing here is Yah is taking us from a 
chaotic time in our life, he's bringing us from chaotic moments or chaotic mess that was started in the beginning from Adam and Eve when we faltered. And from that, what he's doing is he's securing us in him. He's joining us together with him. Why? So that we can have life. Well, who can have life? His descendants. His descendants can have life. How? Through our faithfulness and through our faithfulness to him, he's going to reveal to us. What is he going to reveal to us? How to have life more abundant, how to walk into that top, that promise. The promise. What is the promise? It is being in the Shamaim, heaven, which will be here to dwell with him forever. He, he is the promise. He is he the is promise. The promise. The crazy thing about it is our faith has been reduced down to natural things that we can't take with us. Yes. And 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 it kind of becomes the condition of our heart where we get out of the relationship of the father and we get onto the track of treating our faith like a genie in a bottle. Mm -hmm. You know, we we rub on that thing when we want something. And, and now that because we want something, not the father, not not more of him. Not not exercising faith because it is our right is 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 going to please him. No, it's actually just for that natural thing. So once you get that natural thing, it gets old, right? It's not new and shiny anymore. It, it, it doesn't sparkle the same. You on to the next thing. What else can I rub on this genie bottle of faith right. um, so that I can get a natural thing? Well, it's going to show the condition of your heart, you know, and, and so. It's not just the output or the receiving of things that uh, makes your faith faith. That's not what it is. See, the world, and, and we can be honest here, mm -hmm. has robbed the principles of the father to build and to have things that it has right now. Yeah, It, it is some of the same principles of the father's principles of finances sometimes are, are used to build wealth, but it's not given to the glory of the father. It's not used for the glory of the kingdom. It's not used for, for anything that relates to the father, but the principle works in all situations. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is you could take principle elements of faith um, and use it. It's going to do what it's supposed to do. However, when your faith is not rooted in the word of the father, when your faith is not with the expectation of him, the process growing close to him, uh, um, being ple or pleasing him, mm -hmm. then what you're going to get is going to be lacking. It's not going to be the fullness thereof. It's going to fall short because of your heart condition. But the beautiful thing about our father is he takes those things and he works it to our good. Because the more we see him in that manner, then the more, right, the more we're going to start to do what? Believe him. So now I say that to say this. I'm going to back so up. I think right you here. know where we're going to go. Alicia. Yes. So I said, don't treat your faith like a genie in a bottle. Absolutely. Uh, but you still want to exercise faith to see he, the process between what we're believing in him for and the, and the manifestation of it is to prepare us to have it, to sustain it. But every one of us on here today knows that there was a time that we had a, a big need, a big desire that we put what we would have considered big faith or great faith behind. And it came to it came to pass. But after so much time went by, we forgot that it was a promise answered. We forgot that the father gave it. We forgot what we went through for. We forgot how bad it hurt. We forgot how hard we cried. And we cast that promise aside without caring for it or appreciating it. We began to complain. You complained about that blessing. You complained about that blessed place. You complained about the answer that the father gave you. And then you seek him for something new. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm saying when we have our faith exercise, we're supposed to use this to do what? As a lifestyle, as, as a thing that separates us, not so that we can get something from the father per se, but so that we can experience more of him so that we can please him. And that's going to be the separating factor. You don't want to try to use your faith like the world. It's not belief and wish. Yeah. Our hope is not wish. Our, our hope is expectation. You know something? Scripture says right here in Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 3 says, For I say, let me, let me, let me read it in the uh, separate. It says, For I say that hen, which is, that's how you say grace in Hebrew, that hen given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think. Don't don't think that you got it all together. Don't think that you better than anybody else. OK, uh, then he ought to be. But to think soberly, it means think with a clear head. 
think with clear understanding and all that getting, get an understanding. Get wisdom, get an understanding. Think soberly. Uh, uh, according to Yahuwah has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, let's deal with that. Dealt to every man the measure of faith. Oftentimes when we hear people preach the faith message, it's based upon you got to have big faith. If you want that big house, you got to have big faith. If you want that big car, that wife or that big check, you got to have big faith. I'm I, I, now that I'm out of religion and uh, personally, I'm, I'm into the truth, the uh, emet. That's how you say it in Hebrew, the emet of Torah law. I'm understanding now that it was a lot of gimmick behind understanding faith, the tradition part of faith. Um, And now that I understand that I don't have to have this big faith. Why? Because my faith and your faith are two different faiths. How do I know that to be so? Because the word just said right here that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Well, well, what do you mean by the measure of faith? Measure is a word need, it's called midah. It is it's an extension, whether the height or breadth. Uh, it also it's a measure. It's a it's a portion. It's a check this word here. It's a vestment. It's a vestment. He's vested into you the amount of faith that you need for you and your lifespan. It's a tribute. It's like a garment. It's it's a it's a stature. It's a size. I love that because there's a scripture um, that he says, um, and I said, increase our stature. Yeah, yeah the family to grow in stature with you and man. Favor with you and man. Uh-huh. And in stature, it's, it's not just our size, it's, it's talking about that faith. Let us, let what people fail to realize is your faith is on display. Yes. It's on your lack of faith is on display. It is your countenance, a person who really believes and is rooted in the word of the father, then anything that goes on around him won't deter what they believe on the inside. Mm -hmm. So your faith is on display. So when people try to talk you out of the vision that the father gave you, because it's been months, it's been years, when people try to talk you out of the promises that the father gave you, uh, everybody who knows me knows that I went through a season where the father showed me that I would be pregnant with my little girl. And I took I took Jay through. I thought I was pregnant all the time. I I think I drove him crazy. I thought it so much, y'all, that I even made myself sick. And I started to talk myself out of what the father showed me, what he told me. Matter of fact, it took to honey nine years from the point that he showed me for her to come. Crazy, right? But that what I took on the inside of me, the vision that the father gave me, the words that he assured me, and the fact that I believed it wholeheartedly, I looked crazy. When it wasn't the season and I tried to make it the season, Uh, if there were times where it was just kind of easier to accept the idea that it wouldn't happen or it's not going to happen because of time. Just like Sarah. Girl, I was in my head. I was going to say, yeah, one of my grandmama, Sarah. Sarah, just like her. But so my point is having that, having the faith that that uh, that great faith, that stature is on display. It's when everybody can see what you believe, even though there's nothing around you in the season to support your belief. They start saying, you should just, maybe you shouldn't do that business. You should go get you a regular job because you're suffering in your house and your bills ain't making. Mm -hmm. But the father told you that what he put in you was going to produce this thing, right? Because you have to bless the kingdom with your work down here, your fruit down here. And, And you started telling people this big vision and they looked at you, but you don't have no degree. But you, you, but you, you, they start talking against what the father put in you. This greatness that we're talking about, this, this stature that he's talking about says, regardless of what you say, 
regardless of my past, regardless of where I'm positioned right now, I believe it so much so because the father said it, because the father, because the father said it, because the father said it, even the scripture you said earlier today, when we always come to him and say, father, you said anything that I ask uh-huh. in your son's name, that the answer is yeah and amen. But y'all, we, it, the father don't change his mind, it'd be us. Yeah. I love how you just say this. And, and, and you say people, well, maybe you should do this or that. The reason my father gave us all a Amen. measure of faith, he answered in verse four. Matter of fact, four and five. Four says, for we have many members to one body. Okay, so we're all many members to this body of Christ, right? And all members have not the same office. We all walk in the same path. Yes, me and my wife are together, we're one. But father has called her to something just like he's called me to something. My faith is not the same as hers. He's giving me my own measure and my measure is enough for me. And we don't all have the same office. So I can't tell her, well, maybe you need to give that up. Maybe father ain't saying that to you. Maybe he, maybe you just need to do this. Are you sure you heard from? Yeah. As a matter of fact, we had, we've had that. We had that. We surely have. Like I said, when I was pregnant, Joe was like, if you're not pregnant, or when I thought I was pregnant, yeah, I, was going I was like, girl, you're process. not. I didn't see it that, was, Father. <laughs> we, we had come so far in our marriage with our kids, they were older, that the idea that we were a complete family was easier to take in because we saw that. Mm-hmm. So when I was like, Johnny, the Father showed me this in his dreams and stuff like that, you know, I could imagine from his standpoint, the Father didn't show him that. The Father didn't give him what he gave me. And it, it, his faith wasn't necessary for for what the father was doing through me and so there were times there were times where (laughs) y'all forgive the light but there were times where i had to get outside of what my husband thought to continue to maintain the measure that the father had put in me it didn't matter what anybody else said or thought of me even though it didn't always feel good even though Man, there were times where I cried and I cried and I cried because who wants to be made a fool of, right? So when you broken down because you've been in this thing for years and it ain't came that past yet and people looking at you with the I told you so faith, when people are telling you they, they make an offers to you to just to give you some relief and, and you realize that at the end of the day, you can't bargain with that thing the father told you and you got to hold on to it with all your might. Man, there are going to be times in your faith that it has to be secure. So I, I'm going to back up real quick because we were talking about uh, Amuna. Amuna means literally firmness, security, morally and fidelity. Uh, morally and fidelity, not infidelity. Right. Fidelity. <laughs> that's, that's, infidelity is unfaithfulness. Fidelity is faithfulness. Okay. <laughs> but it is the functioning part of faith. Mm-hmm. When we came back down, we got to the root word, which was Amun. Amun uh, I'm sorry, Amin. And Imun, then we were talking about the uh, being established. Most of us struggle. We have the belief, but that belief is not established. And that's the wavering. This is, I don't know a farmer that goes and put the seed in the ground, comes out to see if it has sprouted the next day. And when they see it hadn't sprouted, they go ahead and dig it up again. And then go and plant it in the ground again and come and do the same thing the next day. That doesn't make sense. Once you put that seed in the ground, it's established. Now it's the watering and it's the carrying and it's the process of it. But anytime you want fruit to come out of a seed, you know the one thing you can't do is what? Dig it up after you put it in. That's what he's talking about with our faith. Faith is a seed. We're talking about the noon. It's a seed that we plant into our, our heart. So the thoughts are the seeds. The soil is our heart. And whatever we believe in our heart, so are we. So what happens now? You take this seed, this belief. Sometimes it comes to you so wide, uh, uh, so wild. Like you could be sitting down, you're not expecting it, and then the Father gives you a glimpse. He puts something in you that That's lights right, your spirit right. up. He puts something in you that gets you excited, but then you think about it, and it's so big. And you think about it and you don't have the money and you think about it. You don't have this person or you don't have this partner or you're by yourself or you don't have these tools. You start analyzing what he gave you. He didn't tell you how he just showed you this something that was bigger than you. And you're looking at who you are right now, where you came from, and you're using it to qualify what you uh, what you have. Mm-hmm. And then what happens is you start thinking against the seeds you planted in your heart. What, what do I mean by that? So you plant that vision in your heart. 
It's right here. I keep looking at this one. I know. I kept okay, sorry. Yes, y'all. He has a camera sitting right here. And I am think I'm looking at y'all and I'm actually looking a little to the right. Sorry. <laughs> but, I say that, I, yeah, I didn't get it. I, I kept... But anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm good now. I'm good. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you get the seed and it comes through your thoughts. And it goes into your heart. And it comes from the Father. But what happens is you start letting things, thoughts come in that don't line up with what you just saw. And instead of holding those thoughts captive and casting them away, you let them sow into the very soil of your promise. Your seed. So now you got weeds in there that's choking it out. And you're watering your weeds as you're trying to water your seed. Because you have not grabbed the thoughts that don't line up. You've taken them into the very place of the thought that you are sowing your 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 wild belief, your big beliefs. Now, how does that benefit you? Well, again, weeds may come, but I don't know a farmer that's going to go and plant it. I don't know a farmer that's going to go to the store, buy the weed, and sow it next to a seed. No, he wouldn't do that. This is how we have to consider our thoughts when it comes to what we are believing in the Father. So what he positioned me uh, to think on, he says, okay, if I've given you the seed and you got to plant it in the soil of your heart, well, let me ask you this. What word? So you can't just, okay, you can't just take the seed and stick it in the ground. Sometimes you have to dry the seed off. Sometimes you have to prep the seed before you put it in the ground. Am I, am I right? All seeds you just can't drop in the ground. You have to do something for it, right? But with him, we have to wrap that seed in his word. That's 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 ain't that's establishing it. We have to wrap it in his word and then we have to tuck it into the soil, into the deep, right? He said, Well, what word are you wrapping your 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 seed with? What what word? Is it what the tour? word of thank you? What instruction? Are you wrapping it in that of the world? Are you wrapping it in that of a person or, you know, because some of us, we have our beliefs wrapped into people. And when they're no longer around or they can't validate it or they can't put a stamp on it, we throw the whole vision away. If that person spoke life into you and encouraged you in your vision and, and, and father forbid they pass on, you throw your whole vision away because you don't have the person there to validate it anymore. And it was never the, it was never for that person to establish a word. It was for the father. So what word are you wrapping your seed with when you're putting it into the soil? That's what you got to stand on. Not back up isn't like yeah, go back dispute or nothing, but I want to, I want to uh, uh, back up what you're saying on scripture because it is dangerous for you to take in different Torah, meaning different teaching or uh, law. Because that can stifle how you really believe. Let's just use the word faith as believe. Uh, it can really stifle what you believe. And how do I know that? So because Romans chapter one, verse 16 and 17 says this, for I'm not ashamed of the Basora gospel, good news of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone. Everyone that believe to the Jew, Yehudi first, and to the Greek. Then it says, for therein is the righteousness of Yahuwah revealed from faith to faith, or belief to belief. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Listen, y'all, faith is much more than just hoping for a tangible thing. This is the very function of how we shall live. This is not my word. This is the word of Father. It is it is the good news. Because of this good news, I cannot be ashamed that when Father said, okay, I am going to do this, this, and this. See, the father didn't go to everybody else to get their approval to speak what he said is going to happen into your life. Therefore, you don't need man's approval. You don't need my approval. Shamoris didn't need my approval when father came to her and spoke to her the promise of Tahani. Father don't need nobody else's approval to you when he came to you and spoke to you the promise of what he said into your life. It is enough 
for you to believe. Why? Because it is counted righteousness unto you. Matter of fact, Abraham, it was counted righteousness unto him because he believed that father said unto him that he is the father of many nations. Um, what father has said to you, it is your life. It is how you live every day. You wake up every day on purpose, by purpose, with purpose, for purpose. And you believe you have this, your measure, your amount of belief in him that what you said to me is going to come to pass. Now, when? I don't know. That's why oftentimes you may want to keep what father said to you to yourself. Here's why I said it. Everybody don't have your back in believing in what the father said to you. Sometimes you may tell because of you, you're excited. The father spoke to you. May, who wouldn't be excited when you hear from the father for yourself and the great thing that he said that he's going to do to you? So we get excited and sometimes we spill the beans too soon and we spill it to the wrong person and oh, one second. we spill it to the wrong person, not knowing that some people are secretly praying against you or saying, well, whatever happened to that thing you said God was going to give you, like you said earlier. But do you really think father spoke that to you? And if you hear that enough and time goes on long enough, then that seed begins to take root the wheat. Begins to take root with the crop that's growing. But I love how the father said one time, no, don't don't tear out the wheat yet. Let the wheat grow with the tear. And then when it's time to harvest, you take the wheat and you burn it. And then with the harvest, the good fruit, we keep that. Be careful sometimes of letting the promise out of the bag too soon because everybody don't have your bag. But there are some people that, you know, you can trust that's going to believe with you. This is life. Faith, belief has everything to do with every single moment, second hour of the day of our life. Now, I was going to say this. Mm -hmm. Everything you're saying, I'm 100 percent with you on. I also consider this. You cannot talk about your seed when it hasn't been established. Mm. If you're if if you have established your belief in the word, you could talk about it all day because now it becomes a witnessing tool. It becomes a testimony tool. Gotcha. It it becomes something that is going to draw a non-believer into belief. But when you not when you not secure, because remember faith in order to have faith, see, we don't always have faith and we credit ourselves to having it. Because faith has to be secured. Which is what the scripture said. It I, has to be I secured. beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that mm -hmm. you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto Yah, which is your reasonable service. Yes. Now, he says, um, when it comes down to the root word of it or just the functioning of it, mm -hmm. you said it earlier. I'm going to read this again. Um, this, uh, this is a book we have here um, that, that talks about some, some key things as a believer. Um, but Faith is the strength or muscle that carries you through the chaos, which secures the inheritance revealed. The milk, Luna, chaos. The chaos. Everything that, that Jay was saying, that's exactly it. The function of your faith is the muscle that carries you through the chaos, which is going to secure the inheritance to be revealed. So I know if I was a farmer, I wouldn't get as excited about the field that I'm sowing my seed into until I can see the evidence of that, that, that field. So what am I saying? When I put the seed in and it just looks like just empty dirt. Mm -hmm. Now it could be a lot of dirt. It could be a little bit of dirt. It could be a little garden or it could be a field, a, a, a big field, right? I'm t probably not going to call everybody I know when I'm just sticking the seed in the ground to show them this. Cause they're going to be like, girl, look, all this dirt, mm -hmm. maybe possibly. But if I have things sprouting, if I have things growing, I'm excited because see, now I got some fruit. I'm going to bring you in to see this fruit. I'm going to bring you in to see these things growing. Now, that, that's the inheritance. That Y'all, you got to understand that fruit is the result of the process. It's the result of the work. Some of us have gotten lost in our attempt and effort at faith because we stopped at belief. We hadn't established it 
and we surely hadn't worked it. We just ask the Father for it every single day, and we sit and we wait. And He's saying, "You know, I told y'all about this. You know, my son told y'all about this. Yahushua said, you know, when he talked about the talents, that there was one that literally just put it in the ground. That's it. And then waited. I knew you was a shrewd businessman, yeah. so I didn't want to do nothing. I didn't so want to. I, just I didn't it. want to take the risk." <laughs> Of losing anything, so I didn't put no work in it. I didn't do anything. I just stuck it back in the ground. Yeah. Now I can just dig it up and give it to you like you gave me, and you should be happy. No, we do that with our faith. He told he told us about that in the parable of the seed and the sowers when he was talking about how the birds would come down and get it. It ain't rooted up. And, uh, it ain't rooted. You know what I'm saying? You get a little sprout, but there's no roots in it. That's how we are maneuvering our faith because we hadn't really taken the time to examine our faith, our faith walk, our faith efforts. We got stuck on belief. You know why we got stuck on belief? Because when we went to church, that's all we heard. We heard the belief. We didn't hear the work. We didn't hear the principal thing. We didn't get taught about it. So when you go into a church environment, you typically aren't asking those questions. You're just doing mimicking what you see. You're so you, told, you gotta have faith. Well, how you do gotta I do have that? faith. You just gotta believe, and the father's gonna do it in time. So people take that. They get into these church environments, especially when they're babes and they're desperate, they're broken and they're hurting. They don't come in. They they come in and get in the back of the pews. You know, some some of them are bold to go up to the front, right? Um, but you just kind of adapt the behavior of the congregation. Mm -hmm. You you raise hands when they raise hands. You say amen, hallelujah, and jump for joy when they jump for joy. You you mm -hmm. dance around when the, the music cues, like you adapt to the behaviors. But what is happening in the inside when it comes to faith and prayer and works and action? Because faith understanding. and understanding. And all that getting, getting understanding. That's right. And the understanding, y'all, ain't, ain't the in between things of the function. The understanding is in the Father. The understanding is taking the reverence to the father. The understanding is knowing that because he said he will understanding that he's not the son of man, that he shall lie, uh, or that he's not a man that he shall lie or the son of man that he shall repent, knowing and understanding that his word won't return to him void, knowing and understanding the things that makes him sovereign and supreme and holy and, 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 and everything. When we grab that understanding, these little in-between things won't matter as much. Let me say something really quickly. Really, really. You said something that when you said it and you began to talk, Father showed me the picture. You was talking about calling people out. You know, you, you got this fear, you got this dirt, but you want to, you got to see. You ain't probably going to call everybody out for that because uh, you called me out here to see some dirt. Check this here. If you go through your word, the Torah, you'll notice that when the Father gives examples of a lot of things, he used agriculture. It's always about seed planting or harvest the crops, right? Not everybody has the ability to see potential or purpose. Potential is a good word. Not everybody has the ability to see the potential. Well, what I mean, you mentioned where everybody said, you call me out here to see this dirt. See, it's much more than just dirt. Yeah. What you see is just dirt. What the father see is a field that when there's seed planted, he sees the harvest. He sees the potential of the harvest and what can be. The, the gift that he's given to you like an artist. An artist sees a blank sheet of paper. Everybody else just sees some white paper. But the artist visualizes the picture of what he's drawing. He knows what wants to go here, what goes here, what goes here. When Father is planting or planted that seed in you, your purpose. It may look like just an apple tree. But if you look at that apple tree, what you see is a seed. But if you look at that seed, what's inside that seed is an apple tree, which has apples on it. And inside those other apples have seeds, which seeds have other trees in it that have other trees. It's a potential. It's an ongoing potential thing. That's why when the Samaritan, he said, listen, you don't have to come to my house. You just speak the word. Okay. And it shall have me say, I'm a man of authority, yet under authority. I tell those to come and they come. I tell them to go and they go. And this was a centurion. He wasn't a Yehudi. He wasn't a Jew. And out of all of Israel, Yahuwah said, I mean, uh, 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 Yahusha said, 
I have not seen such great faith in all of Israel. Didn't say nothing about big faith. His faith was the measure. It was enough for Hamashiach, our Messiah, to say, listen, all you need me to do is speak the word. You believe in me that much that everybody else looking around don't look like nothing happened. It don't look like nothing. But all I got to do is speak a word. And this person that ain't even in my presence, my word can travel there to heal them. So you mean to tell me I just got to believe in you that much? This dirt, this field, all I got to do is plant this seed, plant myself into you. And what you spoke to me, regardless of what everybody else see with their natural eye, as long as I can see what you're saying, as long as I can grasp the understanding of what Father is speaking into you, Father, you said that I can be this harvest. But that's the same thing that you spoke to our great grandfather, Abraham, that he'll be the father of many nations. And it wasn't the next day it happened. It took a little time for the promise to come. But did it not come? See, we get it, it, it took a lot. Of time. But see, we get caught up in we're expecting immediate results. Although Father can. He can. And he has. And he has. But we're expecting immediate turnaround when we have to be processed to obtain what he's spoken. Because anything given too soon can be dangerous if you're not ready. To handle it. Absolutely. And everything you said is, is right. So I was this was turning in my spirit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a heart condition. Mm. So the heart condition is, is key when it comes to a believer because that's the soil that you're planting in. That's that's the soil that you're planting in. Now I want you to consider this. It has happened immediately for some because the heart condition was right. Oh, come on now. The heart condition was right. Now what, what we have now is an unfaithful people. Mm -hmm. Wanting to operate in faithfulness mm -hmm. without making any changes to their unfaithfulness. So your heart condition, you've been an unfaithful person your whole life. Mm -hmm. You hadn't kept your promises. You hadn't did any of the work you schemed. You you have given up on things too soon. You, you've been a one to talk yourself out of commitment. You've been one to talk yourself out of the hard work. You've been one to, to not honor your commitments with other people. You are unfaithful in your habits. Mm -hmm. You're unfaithful in your heart. Because the, if, if you weren't unfaithful in your heart, then the conviction of those things would have changed you. You wouldn't be able to behave that consistently. Right. right. So you are unfaithful in your heart, but you are wanting the covenant result of a promise. Because, see, y'all, that's what faith does. Faith is is revealing promise. It's the revelation of promise um, and the process of, of our, our commitment to get to that promise. Mm -hmm. Most people want the father to prove that he is sovereign, that he's Yahuwah, that he is real by honoring a promise, even though you're unfaithful. We, they want to use faith for him to prove that he is who he say he is. No, he says, no, you must use faith to prove that you are who you say you are. Mm -hmm. You must use faith to show me that you are indeed righteous. You must use your faith to show other people that you are indeed righteous, that you are indeed a believer, that you are indeed uh, a set apart by me. It's not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yes, because he said many, many of you will say, uh, Lord, Lord. But now, haven't I done this in your name? And he's going to say, turn away from me, you worker of iniquity, worker of lawlessness. See, what you didn't sow was your faithfulness to him by faith. What you sow was everything you wanted to do when you wanted to do how you want to do it. You got outside of the instruction of him and did things your way. And because you put his name on a few prayers and because you was in a large crowd and because some things happened. You didn't do it to the glory of the father. You didn't even do it the way he told you to do it. And, and through those things, and even when he gave you the evidence that he could do it, you took it and ran with it for self-righteousness and not righteousness. And he said, you know what? Turn away from me for I never knew you. Now, what am I saying? He said, because without faith, it is impossible to please him. So you won't hear good or well done, my good and faithful servant, because you're unfaithful. Even trying to operate in faith because now you are using your faith as a as a, a genie in a bottle. I have faith. Well, listen, if you get paid every two weeks, you're not using faith. You have faith. an expectation you know that it's coming. <laughs> 
So oftentimes when we're praying for the things that are in the in-between that caught us off guard, we don't have the money, for, we don't quite need, we're counting on that two-week paycheck to be what the answer, but we pray about it and we act like that's faith. It is not faith. Your expectation is in your job. See, when you talk about faith, you're talking about the impossible things. You're talking about the unseen things. You're actually talking about but all of this naturalness. I want to please the father and get what he has for me. I, I, I want to do something that's going to benefit the kingdom. I want to be a functioning member of this body. Mm-hmm. You don't function outside of faith. You can't function outside of faith. And we're going to get into those things. So even though we're talking about this now, guys, what we're going to do here in, in the days to come um, or the Shabbat to come is help you get into the right heart condition for your faith help you to understand the function of faith so that you can apply faith practically to your spiritual and natural life. Because you can't have faith spiritual and not natural. And you can't have natural faith and not have spiritual faith. You are lying somewhere to yourself if you believe you're operating in faith and you're unfaithful. Why? You're not honoring your commitment to man. You're not honoring. He said, he told us don't make those promises if we can't keep them. It is funny. We ain't even really scratched the surface. This was just a dialogue getting people introduced into this word imuna. And when you hear it, you and when you read through our tour, you don't realize this word has been said. The word alone has been so like umpteen times. But from our grasping and understanding, we only understood it from a one dimensional aspect as of obtaining a thing. Yeah, and it's way much more. I mean, like I said, righteousness is included. Yeah, we're gonna get into this it, so. is holiness that includes grace, hinnah said, grace and mercy is included. Sometimes Obedience the is very, included. The very it just depends on where you are in life. See, some of you need to be delivered, and to be rescued requires obedience, faith, it, it, faith, but faith through obedience because yeah. that's the action of your faith. So. Faith is a verb, y'all. It's an action word. Mm-hmm. You can't just sit and believe because there's no action in belief, yeah. right outside of the decision. But when you are in a position where maybe it's your, it's life or death, obedience is your faith is the uh, is the work of your faith. Obedience. Then you're gonna have situations where it's not just the obedience; it is the uh, the instructions, following the instructions, not just in a sense of obedience, but in a sense of not the world's way, the Father's way. So it's a, now it's a seeking the Father to hear His voice and, and to do that. So it's a relationship thing. The mm-hmm. action of uh, of your faith is in your seeking and your asking and mm-hmm. your knocking. Right? There are so many things and different elements of your faith that are actionable. Mm-hmm depending on the time that you're in. Now, obedience is always going to be there. It's always going to be there. It's what they got us all in church. That's why we scattered now. It is. <laughs> now, I, I want to read something this for obedience. you. And we'll probably get a little bit more into this next time. Yeah. But we stand as believers so much on Hebrews 11 and 1. Mm-hmm. And, and while we say it over and over and over and over again, I think there is an element that still has a wish that was just kind of given to us by Hebrews 11. Not from scripture itself, just from the tradition of man Mm -hmm. and the way we use Hebrews 11 and 1. Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. This is designed to help us see that obtaining of a thing is not the proof or the assurance of it. And we have been taught that receiving the thing is the evidence. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. So this helps us to see one more time that the obtaining of a thing is not the proof or the assurance of it, but faith is the assurance and proof of a promise because faith pushes you to the action of obedience, which is accounted for righteousness. So if you have faith that pushes you to the action of obedience, you are walking in faith. If your faith is an idea, is a belief, but you have not been pushed into the action of obedience, you don't have faith. Ooh, Shamars, can I back you up with scripture? Yes, out of the yes scripture? sir. Yes, you keep sir. using this word action. Action, like you said, well, it's a work, right? Mm-hmm. Imuna without works. Faith without works, faith without action is dead, right? Ooh. That's why when we first started this thing off, 
when you ask people about faith, that is the number one scripture they're going to go to is that faith is the substance of things hopeful. We have to do something. You have to exercise. What does that mean? You, not Pastor Jay, not Pastor Shamoris, not Mama, Daddy, Elder, Grandmama, whoever it is you may go to. You, individual, Johnville, Miss Jones, Mama, me, whoever else may watch this later on, you yourself have to do something that shows the Father that you believe that what he said is going to come to pass. What is that? Is that seeking him? Yeah, it could be. Worship? Yeah, it could be. Is that sowing a seed? Yeah, could be. Is that writing the plan and putting forth the action to do? Yes, it could be. But you can't just sit there and twiddle your thumbs, little folding of the feet and crossing of the arms, looking up into the sky, looking for it. Because that ain't no work. That, that's just sitting there. You, you gazing. You, you wondering. You have to do something. You have to act as if you already have it or going to receive it. And you start preparing to receive. Mm -hmm. yeah. The I, I'm going to use myself as an example. Father said I'm healed by his stripes, right? Mm -hmm. Diabetes. Father says I'm healed. I believe that with everything in him. Even though right now my blood may not show it, but there is work that I have to do so that what he said is so. What does that mean, AJ? You got to make sure you don't just put anything in your body, man. You got to watch what you're doing. Hey, you got to make sure your levels are right. Hey, you got to change, renew your mindset, as the scripture said, because I can't operate the old way which caused me to have it, I have to change my mindset and operate in the renewed way so that I can walk in the manifestation of what he said as being completely healed. Now, have I felt that? Yes, I surely did feel that when I was off of all the medicines. Then I was hit with COVID, reverse. Well, I hear somebody have to say, well, if you heal, why you go back? I, you didn't go back. I didn't. I'm still healed, but I have to work Mm -hmm. to get back off of the medication. Yeah. The enemy thought he set me back. Yes, you're going to have some setbacks in your life. All, uh, everybody is going to go through a trial and a tribulation and a setback. That don't mean you ain't holy. That don't mean that you ain't walking with the Father. Listen, it's going to happen. You don't let that shake your faith and make God a liar because we will quickly or foolishly charge the father, but you said this, 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 well, why you let this happen? Uh-uh. <laughs> Come on, jump in real quick. Jump in. Um, it lines up, so absolutely everything you said, man, is spot on. Especially I love you exposing just the walk, even in your healing, mm -hmm. because oftentimes people are looking for the doctor to say you you clear. You're looking for validation of man to, to, to prove your healing by the father. Mm -hmm. That's not what it is. See, according to your diagnosis and your sickness, for some of you, you should have been dead. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to kill you. And if you'd have grabbed onto the words of the doctor more than your the word of the father, you would have been dead. It would have done what it what, what was said, because that was a seed planted. But when you decide that no matter what condition you are in, you're not telling naturally, not to listen to your doctor. that you are absolutely right, because they are tools. Luke was a physician. Right. So uh, there, that you are to do a work. His work is an essential part of a believer's life. Even when he said, I've given you the free gift of salvation, he then turned around and told us to work out our salvation daily. So he work is an essential part of a believer's life. But let me tell you, he woke me up out of my sleep um, a couple of weeks ago with this thing, faith and what he dropped into my spirit before going into the, the word and, and just kind of having the word in my heart, he was able to work it. So he said, OK, I'm just going to read for you because I rolled over, grabbed my phone and I took these notes and just everything that he put in my spirit. I just wrote down. So he says, you know, um, 
Imuna, Amuna requires present action and present belief with an, a made up mind. That made up mind is the establishment, y'all. It's established, it's fixed. He said the evidence of your established belief is the action you take after. So remember, we just read that receiving the thing is not the evidence. It's the action of obedience that you take. That's the evidence. Now, what is action? We kind of chopped on that just a little bit earlier. Mm. Action is the thing done in the manner one, uh, and it's the thing done the manner in which one moves. So remember, we talked about your faith is on display. People can see how you move. And your and 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 your established belief that puts you into an obedient action is going to show in the way that you move. How do I know? Well, if you believe that the father is doing this thing in you, you won't complain about it. Mm-hmm. You you won't complain. Yeah, we've you can't, and we've complain. all been guilty of it. But you're gonna check yourself before you break yourself. Why? Because now your action of obedience can't afford to complain. You're moving in this thing now. Your action is, is is okay, I believe it, so I'm moving. So when something comes to you, a pain coming in your body or disappointment news or or you have to do something that was unexpected, yeah, you, you might want to get down. You might want to cry. You might want to feel depressed. You might want to receive those things. But then you start fighting. You start saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 no. I know this is not what I desired. This was not ideal. This wasn't the way I would have done it. But Father, you told me, you showed me this was going to work. You moved something inside of me. I just need to know what to do from here. Father, if you close this door, another one has, has opened. Because sometimes he gives you a glimpse of the vision and you think you know. It's just a piece of the vision. He said, I'm going to do exceedingly abundantly above what you think, imagine, or even ask, right? Then also he, what he told me, he said, work is the result of your action. Most of y'all think work is the action. Work is the result of your action. It's the result of your action, okay? And then belief supported by Yah's word without the result of action is dead. That's that scripture you hit on. Faith without works is dead. Belief supported by Yah's word, because that's faith. Belief supported by his word, that's the substance. Uh, Without the result of action, which is the work, is dead. Dead is a word, y'all. He's giving me this while I'm asleep. Dead is a word that means lifeless, without functions, without his presence. That's what you got to grab on to. So, belief supported by his word without the result of action is a word without function or his presence. So what do what do it all that mean? If you could just visualize with me here real quick. It's much like being pregnant because y'all who are in the word know that he has used that to illustrate to us birthing pain, labor pains. He's, he's used that even all the way to what? The coming of Hamashiach. OK, so just imagine he planted a seed in your womb and your responsibility is to nourish that thing to build so that when you give birth to the thing, it's not only healthy, it has life. OK, now you are pregnant. But even though you're pregnant, it's on the inside. It ain't outside yet. Right. Mm-hmm. So this is a belief that you have to continue to nourish. But just imagine that you feed in your seed everything that's unhealthy. Right. You still pregnant. Your seed is just malnourished. Now, what happens is if you don't feed your seed the right thing, you're going to have to give birth to that thing and it's not going to be functioning properly or without function altogether. So what happens is when you take the word of the father, you take that seed and you decide that you want to agree and believe and you plant that thing in your heart and you don't nourish it with the word. You don't water it with the word. You don't give that father or give it the father. You're going to have a stillborn baby. You're going to go through the whole process and you're going to have to give birth to your promise without function. It won't have no life in it. Oh. <laughs> it won't have no life in it. So you still had to go through the process because what was in had to come out. Ooh. But because you decided to feed yourself junk. To feed yourself everything but the truth, everything but the bread of life, everything that the water that quenches your thirst. You had to go through the same process, but you don't get the benefit of the life of it. Because by your own hands, you killed it. By your own hands. The work you didn't do killed it. Right. And it's going to be a season where you're going to hurt like nobody's business because it's got to come out. You're just going to realize. 
There ain't no function in it. Maybe in that we might be, but you know what? I honestly believe that just the way the father's tugging on me that we're in this season where it's very detrimental that we are doing faith the right way. We are maintaining and operating in faith the right way. The principal thing, you got to check your heart condition. If you only have faith because you want a thing, your heart condition ain't right. He will not be used or misused by us and we can't hard, hide it from him if we want to. Right. We have to understand that the things that we're believing in the father for are bigger than us. You want you want that job just so you can make so much money so you can go and shop and buy these bags and go and live this this ultimate lavish lifestyle where you're not giving back into the kingdom, where you're not blessing people, where you're not talking about the goodness of the father. Guess what? Yeah, you can do that. You don't need the father for it. You don't need him for it. But if you want to use him to get there. You got to check the condition of your heart. What are you saying, Shamoris? We often forget. We often forget that we're talking to the high, holy, sovereign king. We often forget who we are and what's required of us because he's a promise keeper. He's a covenant keeper. You cannot get over on him. You cannot misuse him. So anytime you want to apply a principal thing of the father in your life and not give him the credit for, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's a that's a that's a lesson to learn. But but what I want to bring you back to real quick is that everything that we do, we need the father in it. What he has put in us is much bigger than ourselves. We are to be selfless and not selfish. Most of the time, many of us are using our faith for our own personal gain. We have no intention to do anything with it outside of ourselves. And so the father is turning our heart to see that even through what we're praying for, it can be used to bless the kingdom. You're being processed to it. But because you so stuck on me, my mind, the father saying, yo, something in your heart. Now, I will say this. This is the last thing I'm going to say before I give it over to the father. I mean, give it over to Jay. The reason that some of you don't have the manifestation of the promise is because if he give it to you, it'll kill you. What, what am I saying? Because we want the father to give us the abundance of our heart's desire when we are unfaithful in managing the little. So anytime he gives you more of what you struggle with is harmful to you. If you're struggling in your finances, you think the answer is more finances. No, the answer is not more finances. The answer is good stewardship. The answer is figuring out how to manage what you have with what you have. That's the answer. So that those behaviors can give you the capacity to have more. We think we're in lack. We are not in lack. We are in mismanagement. And we want the father to give us more to mismanage. He says, no, I'm not going to do that because it can kill you. Okay, you don't think I'm lying uh, or you think I'm lying. You might think that the answer to your question or the answer to your need is more food. You throw away food every day. You eat the wrong foods. So giving you the resources to get more of the wrong stuff or to misuse or to mismanage what you have is not the answer. So what he is doing is, cr- is creating a discipline in you. He's also create giving you the time because some of us want it so quickly. He's given us the time to learn from our mistakes so that when he gives us the abundance of that thing, we can not only manage it, we can sustain it. And guess what? We can bless the kingdom with it. Think about it. Think about Joseph. I think about what you're saying. This is the very reason why we have discussion today to open up the mindset of Israel to look at this word faith not just as a word but to look at it as life and the function of it everything that was said on today this was to get your wheels turning as we go deeper in what father just spoke through Shamoris was for somebody to really think about their level of faith and where they are because got me thinking about me it should challenge everybody to be honest 
Just because we have a title don't mean we exempt. It should challenge everybody. Now what must happen is, until we meet again, you have to do your part in seeking the Father about you. And have you really been living up to the potential of your measure of Imuna? We're going to leave it at that. I'm just going to ask these questions to, to brew on, if you're okay with that. Okay. To think. So the questions that you should ask yourself, along with what Pastor was just saying, is what am I doing to pass on the faith once delivered to others? So your faith is a ministering tool to someone else. What are you doing? If you've taken faith and you're acting in your faith right now, what are you doing to pass it on? Do you live a lifestyle of faith in Yahuwah through Yahusha HaMashiach? And would Yahuwah use you to build off of your faith? Those are some great questions that only you can answer. I don't have that answer for you. Shamoris don't have it for you. But we're going to stop right there. And we're going to pick this up on Bible study this Wednesday. Would, if you would like to join us this, on Bible study this Wednesday, please let us know. Um, we have it on uh, uh, Zoom. We'll definitely get you the information should you want to join us in Bible study. Matter of fact, TGCB, your homework is due this Wednesday. Don't not show up because you ain't did your homework yet. Two weeks. Uh, and, and, and take joy in doing it. Yeah. It really is just to turn those tools and build you up. It's not homework like you in school, but we want you empowered. Right. That's, we, that's, we want you involved. That's the whole mission of what we do to empower you, you know, uh, with y'all's outline principles. OK, um, I think today father spoke, gave great points, gave great examples for you. Uh, and he got the wheels turning because this word is just not just a word anymore. We can't look at those scriptures of Hebrews 11 uh, and other scriptures of faith anymore. We can't look at them the same anymore now that we're understanding the function of it. We can't just lean on that because it's much more in depth. It's much more deeper. So with that being said, I would ask you to consider, you know, if something that was said on today, y'all, consider giving it to the work of TGCB so that we can continue to get more materials to feed you all the truth of Abaya's word. We ask that, you know, whatever the Father places upon your heart, give. Um, if you give sparingly, you know, hey, you reap sparingly. And, and that's been that's been taught from a negative way. Father has given everybody their own thing. So if, you know, all you want is just a little, it's just for you then you give a little just for you. If you want to give because you're expecting a great abundance, then give great abundance. This is not something I'm saying to dog you or beat you or bash you over the head based upon your need from the Father, based upon how you give, okay? He's given to everybody a heart to give. If your heart is to give and all it is is you and you want to receive just for you, hey, give that. But if there's more to it, then give that as well. But we will ask you to consider giving unto uh, the Gate Call Beautiful Ministry so that we can make sure that we bring forth more in-depth teachings like this and have the materials to get for you and yeah. that you grow. We want to do give you guys a, a better virtual experience as well. Uh, many of you are watching online and you're faithful to watch online. And, you know, hey, to each his own. I, I have no heaven or hell to put you in. Um, but we do need your contributions. Um, and we just bless the Father in advance for those of you who have give ha, have given, those of you who are giving, and those of you who are going to give. We thank you all so much. And changes are coming. Changes yes. are coming. But it's going to be all good because it's all the Father. So yes. yes. Well, with that being said, we thank you all. We totally thank you for tuning in today with us yes, here at the Gate Call Beautiful. Uh, gate call we don't beautiful. take this lightly. It's an honor that Abba Yah allows us to come before you all every uh, every Shabbat. And it allows us to be with you all. We're so thankful. Let's see it.
Listen, go out here and put your faith to work. Go yeah. put your faith to work. Be blessed in it and bless others with it. The Father is, has not changed his mind about you. Right. He has not changed his mind about you. So y'all go out here. It's a great day. Yeah, it's a great day. A great time to be a believer. A great time to be set apart. Man, sometimes we can just seem so downcast and serious. No, we have joy. It's yeah. given to us every morning, man. He says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Anytime you pop your head, uh, I mean, your eyes open in the morning, you are greeted with joy. And the joy of the Father is your strength. So you have all that you need. I mean, smile today. Be excited today. Yeah, you might still feel the feels. You might still be going through, but the Father is with you. And if he be for you, who can be against you? If he is with you, man, ain't nothing can come against you and win. Victory is etched into your DNA. You have the seal of the Father on your forehead. Smile today. Walk in your faith today. Be excited. It's just a matter of time that you're going to process the promise. Hallelujah. There it is. I like that. I ain't got nothing else to say. That was a great way to end on it. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom to all of you. My father's children that are scattered worldwide to my 12 tribes of Israel, to the Yehudi, the Jew. Love you all. Music, yeah, love you all. Love you. I hope they can hear it. If not, let me see if they can hear the music. We over here jamming. Shabbat Shalom to everyone that jumped on and joined us today. Shabbat Shalom. I pray that the kingdom has said of Abaya is upon you. The grace and mercy is upon you. Have a fantastic week, y'all. Yeah, I don't think it's up. Uh... I'm doing a great today. Shout out to everybody on yeah. the online stream today. Yeah. Shout out to John Bill. John Bill, who we'll make her administrator. She be, yes, she be coming here. through for us. Yes. John Bill, you are... You are official administrator of keeping us together on on these Zooms and uh, Facebook lives. You'll be able to see what's happening. We appreciate that. We didn't get into it today, but y'all know we don't celebrate Halloween. We are in the witching season. We're going to come to you sometime Sunday or Monday just to kind of give you some education on it. Uh, listen, don't put your babies in them costumes. Don't participate in the rituals of Halloween. It ain't nothing righteous in it. It is a feeble hell of day. It has been here well before we got knowledge of it. And we're going to educate you guys on it. So uh, we're excited to do that. But love on your family. Keep them safe and close and indoors. Okay? <laughs> Don't put your baby out there in the street yeah. for Halloween. Shabbat Shalom. Love you all. Amen. Unto you. See y'all later. See you later. We hope to see you next time at the Gate Call Panel.